against what they believe to be a sounding board for red propaganda. For the American hosts of the conference, placards offer some pungent advice. Two ways of life clash in the Cold War that has come to Park Avenue. In the forefront of the battle are religious groups who have taken up the challenge after a reluctant State Department granted visas to the visitors from Soviet-dominated countries. 2,000 diners jam the Grand Ballroom to hear a succession of speakers denounce the Atlantic Pact, America's control of the atom bomb, and American imperialism. Among these is Henry Wallace, progressive party candidate for president. Dmitry Shostakovich, left, famed Russian composer, is flanked by Lillian Hellman, American playwright, and by other intellectual celebrities who join with the Soviet musician in applauding the attacks against Western nations. In front of Carnegie Hall, pickets again take up their station as Red sympathizers open up another front for a keynote session. Inside, left-wing speakers continue their flood of denunciation, while tension mounts on the sidewalk and feelings run high. Seldom has free America so resented intrusion and attacks upon its ideals. The story is written in these banners. Clashes are narrowly averted by prompt police action, but here is defiance on every hand. These are not scenes in Europe, they are in the United States. The Cold War has reached our shores.